Our next keynote speaker is Goran Dumic, Principal Consultant, consultant in, at Cintio. He holds a master's degree from Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Compounding in Telecommunications and Informatics. We might never truly understand the power of data until seeing it save a life. This is a story about the importance of personalization in medical science and two parents fighting for child's epilepsy using, uh, using data analytics when all standard protocols failed. Goran, the stage is yours. Yep. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the presentation. Thank you so much for joining me. 30% of all epilepsy cases are not treatable, so let's change that. My name is Goran Numic, the other name on the board is my wife, Anna. Uh, our story is all about personalization in medical treatments. What a, a great opportunity we have as medical and uh, as not medical experts to be able to challenge medical science in ways that nobody could have thought it was possible, to change the world for data. We managed to save my son using data, and I hope you'll get um, you will keep this story close, and maybe you will get uh, you know, to use it to help somebody else. And the story goes like this, but the slides don't. <laughs> uh, so my son was born in March 2017, but just after two months, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. He was also diagnosed with pathological brain activity which are these uh, spikes that you see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, which are these spikes that you see here as electrical charges, and they were happening every three to five seconds. Uh, we went through multiple hospitalizations and treatment protocols. They had limited success on seizures, but absolutely no success on the brain activity, which was pathological all the time. Uh, just left us with severe side effects, such as liver failure. Uh, I'll put this in brackets because it's not something that we have been diagnosed right away, but years later. However, it does have a great impact on my son's life. Um, basically, he has, uh, in a gene called tubulin, he has two proteins just switch places. So very basic mutation, but it does so much damage uh, overall, and it just proves what a great machine we are. We're nothing but a chemical machine that actually is very sensitive to any kind of change. Um, some of the symptoms we were battling with, obviously, seizures, but also some other neurological and gastrointestinal symptoms that you see here. Also some other symptoms at the bottom that you see uh, down below, of which I would like to mention teeth deterioration, which was actually a direct consequence of using medications, <clears throat> because if you understand how um, anti uh, ep epileptics work, they target neurotransmitters, uh, and one of the most famous ones are calcium channels. So if you cut off calcium from entering the cell, well, you, you understand what happens. We're getting to the end of 2017. We are just being released from the hospital after six months. Uh, all the protocols have been exhausted. We did experience somewhat seizure reduction, however. Bear in mind he's on the highest dosages of uh, medications. He's constantly drowsy and sleepy. Uh, impact of his uh, uh, development is severe. His EEG, or brain activity, is unchanged, completely unchanged. Uh, he is exposed to all the side effects. So if you read, well, you never read the, the side effects of med, of, of med right? But uh, if you would read them, one of the most uh, severe ones would be blindness. So if we would leave him on these meds for too long, so we kind of thought, you know, um, we, 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 we didn't have much time, right? But then again, we didn't have any support from medical science. So what is our next step? The only skill that we have is actually you know, IT, um, data engineering data analyst, and just a little bit tiny part of data science. Our idea was not to give up, right? So we wanted to collect as much data around my son as possible. We were. We didn't have a plan. We just you know, started logging everything from diapers, medications, uh, you know, playing, uh, any symptoms, any change that we did, any food, drink, everything. We used any, any app. Uh, this one proved to be very simple and straight, straightforward. 
we were determined to use real-life data. We had a gut feeling that we were doing something good and something bad. So we wanted to understand the patterns of the symptoms. We wanted to get to the patterns which eventually broke out. We wanted to understand the sequence and eventually get to the root cause. The transformation part was fairly easy and straightforward. We didn't uh, complicate too, too much. As I said, we were on a you know, tight schedule. Um, basically, the backend database of the app was synced to a cloud drive, which was synced to all of our linked devices, which, from one of which we could utilize an ETL process, which could refresh our dashboards in real time. Just to get a glimpse of how our data looked like, uh, again, no fancy modeling, because it, uh, we, we didn't need to. But uh, imagine a 350-column table with uh, you know, categories uh, divided by event details, amounts, and durations, uh, and uh, indicators, sorry. So 350 columns of questions that we asked about data. What could be useful for any analyst, any machine learning model, any any other analytical tool to help us recognize something. We also use the data enrichment uh, with the publicly available databases, such as this one. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it's basically food categorized um, and assigned variables, such as water, energy, protein, fiber. You have car carbs here, sugars. On the right, you cannot see, but it's also vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. Our first ever seizure chart expert. And I, I, I have to tell you, after we saw this, it was pretty hard to move on because uh, we kind of thought it was too random, right? How do you fix something that is so random? If you have a fire burning, you know, and it's constantly burning, it's fairly easy to put it out. But if, you know, you try to, to put it out and it, it explodes, and then, you know, turns, turns back normal and then explodes again. It's fairly easy to put it out, uh, fairly hard to, you know, put it out. The first analysis, so uh, specific to my wife, because uh, she always uses, you know, markers and uh, uh, bolding stuff and, uh, you know, underlying. But she, she actually learns about data. And that is actually one of the steps that we skip in IT projects. We immediately start coding instead of learning about data first. Unlike her, I started you know, attacking and uh, taking shortcuts. I, uh, I wanted desperately from some models to tell me immediately what is the cause of the seizures. So I utilized uh, correlation matrices and decision trees, but they haven't got me anywhere because, uh, well, fair enough, we are not data scientists. Second of all, the results we got were statistically correct, mathematically correct, but logically very doubtful. Out here, I uh, selected that uh, the sleeping was correlated positively with um, the liquid intake. That's, that's kind of silly, right? So if we would want my son to sleep longer, we would need to you know, give him a lot of liquid, which is, you know, it's a failure to try to you know, drink a cup of water before going to bed. Not where it's something that you would do. Um, so basically, this this got us this got us nowhere. Uh, it just gave us a lot of false positive results. We would need to invest a lot of time, you know, uh, normalizing data, dealing with data, eliminating combinations that are not very logical. So instead, we said, okay, let's let's not use math to solve our issue. Let's solve logic. Let's use logic. So if we are focusing on a seizure, but we can use any kind of symptoms, but now let's focus on seizure. That's the, that is the first step that we are trying to solve. We wanted to correlate it with the previous activities, right? We actually use the clustering method of grouping similar records together and defining something that is called good and bad days, because it's fairly easy in, in, in our case. Low amounts of seizures, that's good. Bad days is when he has, you know, 10 seizures, right? High, extremely high. 
And what you do would normally do in data analysis, you would cut this off because they're outliers. They, they, they bring a noise to your data. They are extremes, right? But out here, we actually wanted only those. The middle ones, they are some, some kind of a middle point we don't care about. We, we want only the extremes. And it wasn't long until we managed to correlate these extremes with food. It turned out that certain combinations of food actually appeared many times on good days, such as this one. They also appeared once in bad days, but you can see that there are no blueberries in the next fruit <sighs> meal. So it brought us actually to, an, to another point. Is it not only about meals, is it, all, is it maybe about the combination of meals too? You can see the first signs of improvement just by using the good versus bad days uh, approach. Uh, you may not see the numbers, but you can clearly see the decline in a seizure chart. Now, what, what will be the next step? So we, we are somewhere in the, in the right path, right? The next step would be, first of all, we identified the problem. We are generating way too much combinations. When you open your fridge, you don't know what you're going to eat. You just take you know, carrot, you take meat, you take grains, you mix it, you eat it, right? That's another combination for us. Then you, then you take something else, potatoes with meat, with something else. That's another combo, right? So we were generating way too many combos. And it was really exhausting for us to you know, do the re recalculation every single time. So instead, we said, let's introduce the menu. You know, fixed set of meals. At, uh, let's uh, fix the days in the weeks. So every Monday will be the same. Every Tuesday will be the same. What we expected is to see, you know, on Wednesday, escalation of seizures, for instance. If that's not the case, then we are way off. But it actually happened. On, on, on Wednesday, there was a huge escalation of seizures. So we, we thought, OK, so something about Wednesday, right? Then you focus on, on, on that one. So just by introducing weekly menu and eliminating bad combinations, we've managed to drastically reduce seizures. Here is the complete uh, seizure trend that you see here over time. First, we separated meat from grains. And that was the first bad combo that we found. Uh, this period was actually uh, very uh, hilarious because I actually forgot to cook one uh, meat uh, at, at, at one day. And, and instead, I cooked uh, something else. But it gave us actually the first four-day uh, seizure-free period. So we were definitely on to something. So kudos to, to all men to, who forget sometimes to do something. Uh, then, we, uh, then we focused on the high protein days. You can see here that uh, this zigzag, it's actually uh, seizures happening every time we gave a high protein food. Uh, so nutrition was clearly identified as the leading trigger for seizures. As, as you can see here, we, we did some other mistakes down the line, but basically we reset the, the menu and started from, from scratch. Um, but we, we definitely know now what was the cause. Remember the pathological spikes? They were gone five, five months after. Um, there are many studies that correlate brain with gut, but they are just studies, right? I don't need studies. This is my study. That saying, you are what you eat, really, really comes to life here. Um, we actually wanted to go back because he had periods when he was without seizures, and then you know, a, couple of was, uh, a couple of weeks would pass, and then escalation of seizures uh, again. So we wanted to get to that uh, change period to see what actually happened. And this was the time when we were switching from a milk formula, so five meals of milk formula and nothing else, to solid food, so fruits and vegetables. During that period, we identified a variable called milk formula over body weight. And when that uh, ratio fell be uh, below a level of 70, we experienced the first warning sign in the sense of seizures. But as we didn't understand it, we, we, we continued to do it. 
and you can see the escalation of seizures on the right. Now, bear in mind, we are, we are IT experts, you know. I, I don't know why this happens, but I don't need to know. Medical science needs to say why. I can only say this is the fact, this is what, what I see, this is what my you know, analyst or my model or something tells me. You can see how the night sleep evolved, so he was basically uh, you know, sleeping two hours a night back in you know, 2018. Now he sleeps about eight hours, so, so this, this chart even isn't until today. The other chart uh, represents the number of waking up at, at night. You can see even the number of 72 waking ups uh, on, on average during a month. Next, we focused on another symptom called nervousness. Because if we didn't treat nervousness, you know, he's, he's hyped, he, he can't sleep, tummy pain, uh, you know, screaming, nervousness, right? If we didn't treat it, it would lead to a seizure. So we, uh, this is the next one that we wanted to focus on. And we identified, sorry, uh, parts of this are not in English, but this one is. So if you're using the right charting, like this is a bubble chart, you can clearly see the combination, and it's a, actually a combination of a previous day meal. So level up, not only uh, meals that you eat today, but what you ate yesterday. Blueberry, apple, blackberry caused so many, so many nervousness. Uh, before ending and, and giving you uh, guys a chance to, to ask questions, uh, two, two, two things. So first, our, our analysis, when we look back, re reanalyzed everything, do, did uh, a lot more research. It led us to a new diagnose. My son is missing a crucial enzyme called the DAO, which actually deals with uh, dissolving histamine and relieving it from the body. Now, he is missing it. So any high histamine food is actually triggering his seizures. Uh, that um, state is called histamine intolerance. And actually, it's, it's not even rare. So many, uh, many of, uh, of us have it. Uh, second of all, um, there are many studies lately that show direct correlation between gut flora and Alzheimer's disease. So uh, please don't, don't underestimate the, the gut flora because it can be your best friend, but your worst, worst enemy. This is all I have. Thank you. Any questions, please? Please. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I will try not to cry. Uh, but did you look into uh, CBD? Um, you know, just I am from Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. Marijuana is legal. CBD is also uh, used to help uh, patients with many different problems, sleep mm -hmm. and, um, and also seizures. And I, I, there was, a, I think, on, on Netflix, I saw a movie about similar family, they had a child with, from, they were from Colorado, and I think the CBD was helping their child mm -hmm. to, uh, with the seizures. It was in minimized significantly number of seizures per day, per month, per week. Did mm -hmm. you look into studies about CBD? Absolutely. Um, bear in mind, CBD was pretty much illegal in, in, in Croatia back then. And uh, funny, you should, you should mention that because um, we had, uh, you know, a couple of months, every, every, every couple of months we had an EEG uh, report being, being made and it was like this all the time. I assure you, for a year and a half, exactly like, like this. And uh, in time, neurologists just you know, took it, looked at it and put it aside. Now she looked at this and she was like, what did you do? And she thought we, we actually introduced something illegal and she didn't want to have anything with, uh, with us. Anything else? Does anyone here have epilepsy or fighting with epilepsy? Or know anybody that fights epilepsy? Luckily, no. That's it for me. Thank you again so much, guys.
gotten. Thank you very much for this amazing personal and Thank insightful so talk. This is your certificate of appreciation for your engagement in DSC 23. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys again.